Hey everybody, so I'm in Paris right now in my hotel room. Okay, I don't know why I just pointed out to the window as if you can see anything. There's like not much of a view right now, it's getting dark. But I just got back from checking out the Huawei P30 series. So that's the P30 Pro and the standard P30. So in this video, I'm going to focus mostly on the P30 Pro because I got to admit, I'm a little bit biased because that's the phone that I have more of an interest in because that's the better phone. If you look at the P30 Pro, you know, it looks very nice with a smaller notch and that curved OLED display, but it doesn't look that exciting. It's nothing we haven't seen before. It looks a little bit, to be honest, like if the Mate 20 Pro and the P20 Pro had a baby, or maybe if they did the Dragon Ball Fusion dance, it just became one device. So looking at the P30 Pro, you know, it might not be the most exciting device, but dig a little bit deeper and you'll see that the P30 Pro actually has a lot to offer because Huawei has refined some of the best parts of the P20 Pro. Chief among them, the computational photography that uses all three sensors to combine image information to do these crazy ass tricks. So yes, the P30 Pro has four rear cameras. You have a triple camera array that's very similar to what's found on the Mate 20 Pro. So that's a 40 megapixel main sensor with a 20 megapixel wide angle sensor and then an eight megapixel telephoto lens. The new fourth camera this year, which you see on the side, it's a TOF sensor, time of flight. So I've covered TOF sensors before, it's been seen in a couple of other phones that came out recently. It's basically like a 3D scanner. So TOF sensor is used to help the P30 Pro shoot better bokeh images, apparently. I say apparently because I didn't really get a chance to try it because I only got to test the phone for 45 minutes in a really cramped room with like 20 other people walking around. So I didn't really have time to test all the features. To be honest, I don't think I'm gonna care for the TOF sensor that much because the Google Pixel already proved that you can shoot excellent bokeh images with just one camera. So I don't know why these other phones insist on building a secondary depth sensor or a TOF camera just to help with all that. I mean, the Mate 20 Pro without the TOF camera can already take pretty good bokeh images. So I don't think I'm gonna use a TOF camera at all, to be honest. So that's not to say the P30 Pro's camera is boring, far from it. That's because the P30 Pro has completely broken away from smartphone conventions. So previously in all digital cameras, the main lens, the color sensor is an RGB sensor. So RGB stands for red, green, and blue. What it does is it picks up all the three primary colors, red, green, and blue, which from those three colors, you can already build, construct an image with all the lighting information. So Huawei has got rid of the RGB sensor and is using an RYYB sensor that Huawei built itself. Now RYYB stands for red, yellow, yellow, blue. So why is the two yellow? Huawei says that the two yellow is to help not just pull in yellow, but also pull in green and also more red. Now red, it's, you know, I'm no digital photography expert, but apparently red light, it's crucial for low light photography. So Huawei says that with an RYYB sensor, it can pull in a lot more light than an RGB sensor. In fact, Huawei says the P30 Pro has a max ISO of 409,600. That's like almost four times higher than what the P20 Pro can do and higher than a lot of what DSLRs can do. Now, I didn't get a chance to test the low light camera yet, but I'm confident that it should be pretty legit because you know Huawei's proven with the P20 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro that its cameras are really, really damn good at shooting in the dark. Now that's not all the P30 Pro's cameras can do. The P30 Pro can also shoot images at 10 times optical zoom. Now that's different from the 10 times digital zoom that other phones can do because optical zoom is supposedly lossless. So you get a more sharper, clearer image at 10 times zoom. Now Huawei was able to do this because it rebuilt the telephoto lens. You can see that the shape of it is a little bit different. That's because inside the telephoto lens is like an L-shaped sensor that bounces lights through a series of mirrors and then somehow through digital trickery can allow for a larger zoom. This is something that Oppo introduced recently too, is just Chinese phones are doing all these crazy things. But Huawei is able to do it, not just with the telephone lens, but also by pulling information from the 40 megapixel sensor. But you know what? There's no point in me keep talking about this. I'll just show you some samples right now. Now again, I was stuck in that room, so I didn't really get to try on a lot of different things, but you'll see these samples right here. The P30 Pro's 10 times zoom, it's definitely more clear and more sharp than the 10 times zoom 
on the iPhone XS and the Samsung Galaxy S10. I mean, look at these images, they speak for themselves. Now the P30 Pro can also do digital zoom up to 50 times. I mean, at 50 times digital zoom, you're gonna get a image that's kind of grainy and a little bit like jaggy. It's not gonna be that sharp, but still the fact that you can zoom in 50 times is crazy. I think a lot of pervy ass dudes is going to be using that phone to kind of creep on girls across the street. Please don't do that, by the way. Now in terms of selfie cameras, both phones has a 32 megapixel front facing sensor, which is freaking huge. So you love taking selfies, that's good news for you. Both phones also have an optical in display fingerprint reader, which is very similar to the one used in the Vivo Next dual display, which is good news again, because that fingerprint scanner is really good. I actually unlock it a lot faster than I can with the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And I also like that the P30 Pro's fingerprint scanner location is actually lower this year compared to the Mate 20 Pro, which was kind of hilariously high up on the phone. Now battery is an area that Huawei has been a leader in and it's no different with the P30 Pro. It has a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, which should be enough to last you an entire day. On the smaller P30, you get a 3650 mAh battery. So still enough to last an all day for that phone because that phone has a smaller 6.1 inch display. In fact, let me run through the differences really quick. So the P30 has a 6.1 inch OLED display that's not curved, it's completely flat, but it's an OLED panel, which is good news. And it also has an in-display fingerprint reader as mentioned. The P30 only has three cameras on the back. It doesn't have that TOF sensor on the Pro. But like I said earlier, I don't think I'll need the TOF camera and I don't think you will too. It's probably very gimmicky. So that's about it for a quick look at the Huawei P30 Pro. I don't have pricing information yet because Huawei didn't give it to me, but when I get it, I'll have it in the description below. I'll definitely have a follow-up video on the P30 Pro very, very soon. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.